Hi there, welcome to Nepi Invest. Hands up, who's heard of the company called Gratifi? I'm putting my hand up a little bit without any confidence because although I had heard of this company, I thought they were called Graffiti with the F at the start, the T at the end. And I did know they had two I's at the end. And I thought that was the only difference between the word graffiti and the company's name. And then I Googled the company Graffiti and it came up as Gratifi. So that was the first shock that I thought this company was graffiti, but the company's name is Gratifi. So not many people would have heard of this company, Gratifi. But there are a couple of reasons why I am doing this video. The first reason is because of the phenomenal growth in cash receipts from the September quarter one year ago to the most recent September quarter. In fact, cash receipts have grown from 1.8 million to 5.4 million. So just that fact alone had me interested in this company. I wanted to understand why there was that growth. And then as I had a closer look at the company, I was induced, maybe not induced is the right word because I have not taken a position in this company and more than likely I won't take a position in this company for a while yet unless they prove to me they can become operating cash flow and free cash flow positive on a continual basis. But the thing that did intrigue me was the CEO of this company. He does have an interesting history and a successful history at that. So that is a reason to have an interest in Griff Gratifi is just the current CEO. So what exactly does Gratifi do? They uh, help businesses to manage, operate and customize their loyalty programs. And they do have quite a few solutions. So their rewards or loyalty and rewards engine is called Mosaic. So Gratifi does call themselves a SaaS company. So software as solution. And I'm just looking at some of their solutions here. So they have an employee rewards and recognition create a people-first digital rewards and recognition program to retain talent and increase collaboration. So a lot of buzzwords there. And some of the other things they also have here or the other solutions they have here, sales incentives and channel partner engagement, a gamify, I'm not sure what exactly that word is, your sales incentives programs to make channel partners your brand ambassadors and boost sales team motivation, customer engagement and loyalty, streamline your customer loyalty program, by offering a sophisticated digital platform for award redemption. So those are the solutions they have right now. And to be fair with you, when it comes to loyalty programs, I don't use them. I'm not the sort of person who would use loyalty programs. I'm not the sort of person who would buy more products or use more services if I was a part of a loyalty program. So obviously these loyalty programs are not are directed or aimed towards people like me. But that doesn't mean they can't be successful. And based off the uh, the revenue or cash receipts growth from this company over the past year, it does seem like Gratifi might be doing something right. Now to the second reason why I was uh, drawn towards looking or doing a video on Gratifi. Now what comes back to the CEO? The CEO is Ian Dunstan and he, this guy has a lot of experience in this space. In fact, mentions here, 35 years experience in leading global financial services, technology, and ASX listed companies. He was a CEO of another company called Rubik Financial Limited. That was a software company that developed and implemented banking, wealth management, and mortgage broking solutions. And he sold that company to Temenos, which is a Swiss company who has a markup of $9 billion. And that was, well, that takeover was done at a 72% premium to WVAP. He was also the founder, and this is probably the thing that intrigued me the most about Ian Dunstan, the founder of um, Bravira Solutions. And he also helped or was involved in the listing, the ASX listing of Bravira Solutions. So a lot of experience here, not only in running companies, in being a CEO, but also in the founding of other successful companies. So a lot of experience here. And this is one of the things that has drawn me to doing further research on this company. Now to a few facts in regards to Gratifi, founded in 2009 and listed on the ASX in October 2017 via Waratah Resources. Uh, so this looks like it was a backdoor listing. Before they were named Gratifi, they were named something else. I think it was called Mobicom, M-O-B-E-C-O-M. Can't remember exactly when they went through the name change. It was a few years ago. The largest shareholder is Bombora with 11.8% stake in the company. Bombora also 
um, well, Retivi also has a fair bit of debt uh, with Bombora. I'll have a look at that later in the video. The current markup is fairly easy to calculate because Retivi has about 1 billion shares on issue. Current share price is 1.4 cents, which means the markup is $14 million. Now, beware, the shares in this company are illiquidly traded. So on the last trading day of uh, 2022, the share price of this company rose 35%. Not a lot of volume simply because of that liquidity or illiquidity problem. So don't be surprised to see the share price rise 35% one day and then fall back 35% the next day. And the ticker for this company is GTI. And now we get on to the main reason why I decided to do a little bit more research on this company, and that is the growth in cash receipts. But just because this company has had impressive growth in cash receipts doesn't or isn't the end of the story, and I'll show you why in the next two slides. So if we go back one year ago to the September quarter for financial year 22, they had $1.76 million in receipts and were operating cash flow negative by only $547 million or $547,000, not million dollars. And because they were burning through cash, they didn't have a lot of cash on hand, only $1.7 million of cash on hand. They also spend a fair bit of money on intellectual property, which is expensed. Um, capitalized, I mean, capitalized uh, research and development. I could be completely mistaken with that, but I think when they do, a company does uh, capitalize their research and development, they put it into intellectual property, but I could be mistaken. Anyway, $729,000 in intellectual property. So always have a look at intellectual property because some companies can be highly uh, operating cash flow positive or near neutral, but then be highly uh, free cash flow negative because of a lot of spending in intellectual property or because of capitalized uh, research and development. Now on to the September quarter for financial year 23, and you will see that significant rise in cash receipts growing from 1.7 million to 5.5 million. Yes, a tripling in cash receipts. But you'll notice right at the bottom here that the company is not operating cash flow positive. In fact, they're more operating cash flow negative in this quarter than they were one year ago. So this company has not reached any scale. So the increase in cash receipts has been met by an equal or, an or a larger increase in spending. So receipts up $3.8 million. Product manufacturing and operating costs up $2.8 million. Staff costs up 400,000, administration costs up 500,000. So the increase in spending was larger than the increase in cash receipts, slightly larger. And that's why the company is more operating cash flow negative in this particular quarter. So that is a big negative for me. The company hasn't reached any sort of scale. You would expect with a tripling in cash receipts that the operating cash flow would have improved, but it didn't for this company. And the cash on end at the end of this particular quarter uh, was $1.5 million. And the company does have a little bit of debt and you can find this in section seven of the appendix four C. Always look at this section just to see the debt, not only the debt, the particulars of their debt. So right now they have $3.14 million in loan facilities. And based off the description in 7.6, all these uh, facilities are with Bombora which is the largest shareholder of this company. So for instance, uh, they issued 10 convertible notes with face value of $150,000 each to Mambora. In August, 2022, the group issued 713,000 uh, at a face value of $1. The unsecured debt was provided by Mambora and various other sophisticated investors. It will expire on 21st of February, 2024 at an interest rate of 10%. So it's very important to look at the interest rates. The first one, is 8%, the second one 8%, the third one 10%, and there's nothing for the fourth ones there. So interest rates are fairly high. So it's my problem with these sort of companies having debt and increasing their debt because the debt repayment would be substantial and increasing. Now onto the receipts history for Greg Tafey. So when I did see that significant increase in cash receipts from last year to this year, my first thought maybe it was because of an acquisition. And the best way to know if it was an acquisition is just go through the, the uh, announcements from the company. Or if you look at the receipts history and you see a massive jump 
from one quarter to the next, that could be an indication of an acquisition coming through in the previous quarter. But you don't see any massive increase in cash receipts from one quarter to the next. It has been going up quarter on quarter. If you look at the December quarter last year to the March quarter, there was only an increase of 200,000. Then the next quarter grew by 600,000 and then a 1.6 million increase in receipts from the June quarter to the September quarter. But if you look at the growth in cash receipts over the past six quarters, it's definitely there. And that is after about a two year period or three year period here where cash receipts were going nowhere or climbing at a fairly slow rate. So something has happened to Gratifi in the past six quarters, which has led to a significant increase in the cash receipts, increasing from less than $1 million to $5.5 million. Now let's have a look at the chart, and this is probably the ugliest aspect of this company. Nothing to be get it, to be excited about. Looking at the daily chart, this is the two-year daily chart. In fact, a little bit longer than that, because if we go back to 2020, you probably can't see it here, but from June 2020 to about uh, the start of 2021, nothing was really happening with this company, and then massive volume came in at 2021. But no matter what happened then. Uh, could have been an acquisition or something like that. The share price has not really, or the market has not really responded and the share price has decreased. So back at the start of 2021, the share price was around about 3.8 to 4 cents and the current share price is below 2 cents. So the share price and the valuation of this company has halved over the past two years. And when you look at this chart, it's a fairly ugly looking chart with the share price in a downtrend and just dripping downward at a fairly slow Right. So unless I see a turnaround in the financial state, so if they can show some scale, become operating cash flow, free cash flow positive until then, and I'd have to also have to see a bit of a change in or shift in the sentiment in the company and a change in the trend of the share price. Until all those things happen, I'm staying out of Gratifi and maybe I'll put on my watch list, watch list, but I'm unsure about that at this point in time. That's all I have for this video, looking at Gratifi. And even though they have tripled the cash receipts from the September quarter one year ago to the most recent quarter, the September quarter, the first quarter of financial year 23, they have shown no scale and the company is yet to show that they can become operating cash flow and free cash flow positive, which I think would be a fairly important flashing point for this company. So really good cash receipts growth. A nice a CEO with lots of experience. So potentially with that experienced CEO and that growth in cash receipts, maybe this company can turn around. Maybe this company will hit that really important inflection point of becoming operating cash flow and free cash flow positive and profitable. And until I see that, I'm staying out of graffiti at this graffiti at this point in time. If you have any thoughts about this company, maybe you are a shareholder, which I doubt because I don't think there's many shareholders in this company at this point in time. I have no, no chatter in regards to this company. But if you are, can you please leave your thoughts in the comment section of this video? Otherwise, I'm not a financial advisor. If you do need financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who is qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. That's it for this video. Have a good day. Bye.